What's up, guys? It's a good chance for me to show you some tips on installing a universal fan motor. In order to make it look maybe a little less universal and a little less hacked than what a lot of people do. So, um, I don't use universal motors that much these days. Almost always OEM, but this is like an Armstrong made unit. Um, not too many distributors for them around here. And this place has so many different brands here. We've got Train, Armstrong, Carrier, GE style Train, York, Goodman, piece of junk. You know, and, uh, and they've already got a bunch of universals in them, so. I'm not gonna go out of my way for this unit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, but I'm gonna do a nice clean install of a universal motor. So, a uh, couple things that, you know, and of course there's one dude on one of the group forums lately that's got all pissy that I called some work out. He thinks you should just do work and keep your mouth shut. But that's why our industry is getting to be a joke. Um, here's uh, the reversing wires. People are notorious for jamming these up through the fins and connect them on the other side to hold them up and out of the fan, which oh, you kept them up, but now you got wires uh, up and out where the sun's gonna rot them and they're gonna get bare and people are gonna get shocked. Now, of course, this kind of plug does hold up a lot longer than those little plastic spade male and female terminals. But what I do is you kind of figure out which direction it needs to go. So, and it gives you this light here. Right, I had so to get in there right where the camera was to get my arms in there and get good leverage to crimp those. So these are crimped nice and short to the motor. They're not going nowhere. Now here's the other thing. Four wires. People pull out a motor that has three wires, right? OEM almost always has three wires. LN, L2, and your capacitor, but it's just wired like a compressor. Now here's what fools people. They get a new universal and it's got four wires and they, they kind of look at the basic schematic and they don't really understand that they could just cut off the one wire, so they go and hook it up like this. Uh, brown wire to capacitor, and then a uh, brown wire to white stripe to the capacitor. So, and they're usually, sometimes those are shorter than the other, they're not on this, but they'll think, oh, so they can't home run it, and they'll just, because uh, there's only three wires going back or whatever, so they'll just uh, hang the capacitor real close to the motor. Usually leaving the original capacitor still in its location. I, that sucks. So, uh, what I do is you just take this wire off and you cut it. Okay. So the brown wire with the white stripe has been cut. It's, nothing's connected to it. It's just there. If you don't cut these, then the people are putting the fan blade way up here, but the blade was actually close to the motor. So these are just made that you just snap them off. They're just like hardened metal, so they just snap right off. Break them off. And if you really want, you go get your sawzall or something and cut the shaft down shorter. But when you have a lot of clearance on this unit, it's not really necessary. I don't, uh, I'm not a stickler for the shaft being left a little long. Some people are though. Okay, this is what it'll be like. The uh, wires are not gonna, they're not long enough to possibly drop down into the fan blade. It's over an inch clearance. Blade's close. Definitely need it real close on a cheap generic unit like this. Doesn't even have a shroud. See how this has built-in shroud? And by design, they have usually a, like a third in or something, you know, the blade kind of up in there. Probably the same thing with this uh, train unit, but not with this unit. Anybody that's followed my videos for a while, those that I've documented what we call the run cap bandit, uh, either guy that just changes the capacitor because he said it was weak or changed one because he changed a motor or something, he'll uh, have like, say, like four wire motor or whatever. He'll be too lazy to run it back to OEM configuration and he'll just like stick this underneath to the two wires coming off the universal motor and just hang this sucker, tape it up back there in the, behind everything. And then this capacitor here will still be wired in. There's no reason you can't spend a couple more minutes and put the capacitor where it belongs. So yeah, it's really nice to put the capacitor back where it belongs. Um, sometimes it'll be a different shape and this might not be, you know, adjustable like that. So you might have to cut a piece or bring up some plumber strap. Whatever, but basically, you know, a quick, quick glance at this, you know, except for that big fat four-in-one sticker down there, you're not going to really even notice that that's a universal motor. I didn't put the acorn nuts back on because they seem to be a little different thread. But wire to back is three wire. Everything's all secure. If you don't have any uh, wire ties and electrical tape's fine. Just got it all back and tidy. See if it goes the right direction. There you go, back up and running. This thing was almost as much of a pain in the ass as a Goodman unit was, 
you know, the old Goodman units, you used to put this chicken wire type uh, coil guard up on the inside of here and you had to run your little screws around there. Thing falls out of square once you take it apart, it's a little biatch to get back together. However, it is a lot quieter than a Goodman. This Armstrong unit, so. Motor sounds good, looks good. Can't tell with OEM unless you really look for it. Wired back like factory, three wires, dead end connectors tied real tight up in here. Capacitor home run back to where it belongs. That's the way you, you could use a universal motor, to make them look good. Look at this, using a universal fan motor twice in one day. Hard to ever use universal fan motors. Anyway, again, prepping this motor. This is going in a carrier unit. Customer, the maintenance guy, uh, didn't have the motor he thought it did, and he had to go somewhere, so he called us out to do it. And so, of course, all I have is a universal for right now, being that this is after hours. So, got the motor direction set, wires clipped. Now I'm putting on the uh, dead end connectors, as you see, like that. Gotta crimp the piss out of them. Big ass alignments, those are that's crimped on there real nice so yeah so these stay real close to the motor they don't go anywhere and then this uh the other wires are put into the uh conduit again i prefer the smaller dead end connectors but i'm out of them and they're a lot smaller diameter and these wires aren't that heavy gauge so i prefer them plus there's enough room in the conduit that i could shove them into there and it's really clean but that's still much better than people leaving the wires sticking up through the fan grill